Hi, I'm Rashmi Dubey, ESG litigation partner at Gunner Cook. And over the next few weeks, I'll be talking to you about the importance of ESG litigation and how there's going to be an increase of this type of litigation, particularly from stakeholders and not just against the corporations. I mean, that's understood, but this is really against the directors and them personally. No longer can directors sit back and say, I'm sorry, but we just didn't know the impact this was going to have on our stakeholders. If you'd like to know more, please do contact me and watch out for my posts. What lies behind the iceberg? In today's world, we are all about the conversation, environmental, social, oh yeah, and of course, the governance. I say it in that tone simply because when I ask directors, do you think you're compliant with good governance practices? I get a blank look, a stare, and possibly rolling of the eyes in their minds while they think about, of course, we're compliant. What is she pitching at? Response. Yes, we're compliant. And compliance is the easy part of running the organisation. My response to them is often bewildering. Oh, I say, no. I have absolutely no interest in compliance in the terms you suggest, i.e. tip box that secretly I think you believe is a nuisance. I'm interested in the directors of the board exercising more than just their fiduciary duties. I'm interested in the practice of good governance and how their decisions impact all stakeholders, not just their shareholders. In today's economic and political climate, we can no longer simply say directors and officers, ahoy there. I see the iceberg and will navigate in a way that will suit our profit margins or just be compliant with legislation. Why? Because directors and officers know better and they should be acting with good practice of governance and consideration of the fiduciary duties to all stakeholders that are being impacted by their decisions and the issues around ESG. What the directors have not appreciated is what is coming behind the iceberg. And that, my friends, is litigation against the company directors and officers for bad ESG practices and failure to consider the stakeholder. In litigation, the starting point has been, are you a current sitting director of the company? The simple answer for accountability is if yes, then are you likely to be held accountable for the deeds done and the failure to consider your fiduciary duties? There are, of course, exceptions, both in terms of jurisdiction, but also board minutes and the important role they play. The minutes will outline the decision taken by the board of directors and also documents those directors that dissent from the main decision taking. If you'd like more on that information, please read my article around board minutes. But what if you are no longer a director? Well, that's interesting. Well, this is not as straightforward as some articles suggest. When did directors and officers resign? That's the first question to ask. What are the laws in the country in which the directors acted? Technically, when a director leaves, the fiduciary duty stops. But the governance and the laws around the organisations come into play where directors are being sued by stakeholders for past decisions, where they had known or ought to have known that companies' activities would damage the planet and or its people. In most cases, it has to be intentionally and deliberate. But what about the, I just didn't know or realise impact defence? Well, stakeholders can run the argument that to ignore is no defence. And the amount of information available today and the requirement to understand the supply chain and the impact of corporate actions on the supply chain and the community and communities as well as the environment. 
I just don't think, for instance, where the USA, for example, a defense is often put forward as a business judgment rule, often insulated a director in terms of their liability, will be a feasible defense, i.e., I made that decision because I thought it was a good business. Because the good governance is good business judgments. This is where turning a blind eye and not taking action around ESG leaves the board of directors wide open to what is heading behind the iceberg. Litigation from stakeholders. This is not a fanciful thought of trying to create litigation. This has already started. Recent examples include Germany Utility RWE case. In this case, this involves a farmer, the claimant, who claims that RWE knowingly and contributed knowingly contributed to the climate change by emitting extensive volumes of greenhouse gases, and as a result has to bear the responsibility for the melting mountain glacier near his town. There is a growing awareness and concern that people are often impacted by the decision of the board of directors, are poorer people, and that legislation is slow to catch up. So people and stakeholders are now taking matters into their own hands. What should the board be doing? One, ensure that the ESG policy is updated and includes a diagram of stakeholders. Two, is there an ESG committee? There should be. Three, has the board of directors requested from management their ESG concerns? And finally, is there a formal reporting and monitoring system in place that allows the CEO to identify ESG problems? Thank you for listening. I've been Rashmi Dubey, partner at Gunner Cook, helping to navigate through ESG litigation and prevention of claims. Thank you for listening. And if this has been of interest to you, I've been Rashmi Dubey, litigation and ESG specialist with Gunner Cook. Please contact me directly.